the section goals for jetting in a 38 by 36 inch conductor for a Thunder Horse well include the following. Achieve breakthrough safety performance. Achieve health, safety, and environmental goals of no accidents, no harm to people, and no damage to the environment. Jet the 38 by 36 inch conductor to 270 feet or greater below the mud line with 10 feet of stick up. Use only one jet assembly. Achieve no washout around the conductor. Installation of conductor with less than one degree of inclination. Key risks in jetting in the 38 by 36 inch conductor include loop currents and weather. These will pose a significant risk for not meeting target times and must be closely monitored. Failure to jet to grade. If the target stick up of 10 feet is not met to within plus or minus one foot, rejetting the conductor will be required. Unacceptable conductor angle. If the angle exceeds 1.5 degrees, the conductor should be pulled back to the mud line. Consult the drilling engineer for re-spud. Spacing of the 24-inch bit with reference to the 36-inch casing shoe to ensure optimal jetting. Visibility of bullseye immediately after the 36-inch casing is jetted in place. Our people will get the tools all together, load them up on trucks and deliver them to Fushaw and from there they'll be loaded on the work boat and sent to the rig and then out here we'll unload the boats and inspect all the tools to be sure we have the proper tool for the proper job. We bring that out on work boats, offload onto the deck and uh, measure and strap it. The conductor string consists of uh, one shoe, four intermediate joints, and a crossover and a wellhead. It's painted yellow for our old V assist so they can see it when we get to the bottom in 6,039 feet of water. It's, it's, the visibility is not as clear as it would be. With yellow paint, you can, the visibility is quite well. Prior to running the conductor, we'll rack back uh, on a stand, the 38 inch standard running tool for drill clip and have it ready in the setback area to engage the wellhead once we're landed out in the rotary table. Well, we, the, the pipes are picked up with slings, big slings, and set in the rotary table on pad eyes. Bolt-on pad eyes, removable pad eyes to keep from having cut torches or anything getting burnt. We have uh, bolt-on lift eyes and uh, bolt-on torque eyes to handle the pipe and uh, perform makeup on the rig floor. One of the features of the multi-thread, it does not have a metal-to-metal -metal seal. It seals by O-ring. The maximum torque uh, that we like to put on these connectors is 36,000 foot-pounds. That's achieved by using the uh, easy torque. At that point, once the connector is made up on the rig floor, each connection uh, has a series of anti-rotation keys. We install anti-rotation keys on the pipe to keep it from backing off or vibrating loose, going in the water with rough seas and stuff while we're jetting. They're a little tight, and a lot of times you have to drive them with a hammer, and then you put a lock screw in it to make sure if it won't fall out and uh, there's teeth on it to keep it from turning. We have our own drill quip box furnished by PP to uh, 
reuse all these plates and stuff. The bolts are replaced every time we use it. There's new bolts being put in instead. We don't use the same bolts twice for safety reasons and thread damage can some of them. And uh, they're all sent back to drill quip for inspection and reuse on the next string of conductors being run. The packing material is put around it to protect the O-ring and the locking mechanism on the tool itself. And uh, it, it's keep from damaging it. So, but we still inspect it quite thoroughly once we take all this off of it. It can, it can get damaged in shipment moving from Houston to the dock, to the boat, to the rigs. There's four big pins on that and there's four slots cut in the top of the low pressure housing. You rotate it till the pins match the slots and it's to keep the tool from rotating, the main housing in the tool from rotating. It's considered, a, it's called a dual cam tool where you got a left hand uh, make up and you got a right hand release. You turn it roughly five to six turns to the left and your indicator rod will drop down as you're turning it. And once you achieve seven eighths of a stick up on your rod, you should be made all the way up. And it'll stop, it'll bump, then you break it back just a little bit to make sure it's not jammed in place. Then we pick up the wellhead housing out the rotor table remove the pad eyes that's on it. Then after we get all this rig floors cleaned up. We'll install the running tool to handle the conductor string and lower it to the moon pool into a moon pool cart which we have a plate, support plate, that accommodates the 38 inch well head. We land it in the cart and set it down, check it, make sure everything's all right. Then we go ahead and release the running tool with five to six turns to the right. Pull the tool up, bring it back through the rotor table and we rack it back in the derrick, standing in the derrick. The Roughnecks install all the rotary bushings back in place and then they will get the directional driller and run the jetting assembly. So we pick up our mud motor with the bit on it. We make up our space out uh, subs and equipment that's already made up. We pick those up. We run those inside. And then the last piece, we pick up the running tool again. Land the running tool in its slots, in the anti-rotation slots. The objective with the BP procedure is to make sure that the drill bit teeth are flush with the end of the casing once the two components are all made, made up and screwed together. We do this by using an ROV tool once it's all assembled to verify the bit position inside the casing. We make the tool back up five to six turns to the left. Then after that, we'll pick it up out of that cart it's sitting in, move the cart out the way, and install what we call some bullseye brackets on each side of the 38-inch casing. The uh, slope indicators or bullseyes are a measuring device in order to read well inclination. The uh, slope indicator brackets are pre-calibrated at Drill Quip's facility and a leveler bar is installed on the slope indicator flanges in order to get a pre-calibrated bullseye. As you can see on the bullseye, the very center dot is zero degrees. The first line that you see uh, is, a, is a half degree and then the big line would be a one degree. So the three quarters and the quarter are in between the lines. After the slope indicators are installed, we then go ahead and run the casing down. Once we get close to the C4, we go ahead and have the boat move us into position over the slot that we're ready to jet. This is normally indicated by four buoys. 
The buoys have the number of the slot that we're going to be jetting. And then we lower the casing down into the mud line. The slope indicators need to stay less than one to one and a half degrees of angle during the whole jet in procedure. Hopefully that angle will be more like a half to one to three quarters of a degree. The way we jet is we use a, we don't typically use a, a rock bit and we use a mud motor. A mud motor is a tool that Anadrill has that allows you to turn the bit without turning the drill string. We cannot turn the conductor casing, so we put the motor inside the casing with the bit attached to it, and as we pump fluid down through the drill string, only the, the bit turns, and that's what helps us, or that's what we call jetting in the conductor casing. We use a flow rate from about 20 gallons per minute up to about uh, 1,400 gallons per minute. We steadily increase this as we gain penetration depth below the mud line. Typically we start out turning the, the pumps on at about uh, 20 feet of penetration with about 20 strokes. And then as we get more depth of casing penetrated below the mud line, we bring the pump up so that at the end we're pumping 1,400 gallons. We have an established schedule that we use to do that. Most of the time we're bringing the pump strokes up in about uh, 10 stroke increments, which is about a 50 gallon increment per 10 strokes. So we go from basically 50 gallons per minute up to 1,400 gallons per minute. Once we've achieved our final uh, spud in, we'll uh, check our two indicator rods after we get good visibility on the ROV. This is a double check to uh, verify 10 foot stick up on the wellhead. At that point, uh, we'll set up to release the running tool and uh, we'll achieve a neutral weight at that point and turn the running tool five right hand rotations using the top drive and we'll uh, pick straight up and out and recover the running tool back the surface and uh, do a final inspection. What we're trying to achieve in this field is 271 feet of penetration with the casing and that would leave us with a 10 foot stick up or 10 feet of pipe sticking up above the, the seafloor line which is what we call the wellhead and this is where the subsea equipment will attach to when they get ready to complete the reservoir for the oil and gas that they hope to produce.